So are you trapped in a cycle of rejection? Jimmy Evans reveals how to break his grip and discover a deep love and acceptance that can only come from God. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Life, sometimes messy, but always meaningful. We fall and falter, searching for ways to put the broken pieces back into place, unraveling emotions and unpredictable outcomes leading to an unsettled soul. But you, you were made for more. Whether you've fallen or simply fallen apart, there's hope for every hurt and heartbreak. With the fullness of God, you can be free. To rise above fear through faith. To be transformed by truth. To embrace love and experience the overcoming life. Rejection, it has touched almost every person's life at one point or another, and oftentimes it can leave people imprisoned in fear and hurt, but you can be free from its grip. And today's guest is going to share more about that. But first joining me around the table is your favorite subject, Haviland Ford. Oh my goodness, my <laughs> least favorite subject. But you know, rejection is one of those things that you, you can see through the lenses of your life when you're not healed. Yeah. You can think someone's rejecting you and they're not. It's about your perspective. Oh. So it's something that I'm constantly making sure the rejection Fed. check and learning how to overcome it in, in everyday life. That's good. Dorothy Newton, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm trying to, I think this is gonna be just lessons learned for me because honestly, I love, love, love people and care so much, mm -hmm. but if you don't want me included, then that's okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't experience rejection yeah. wow. often. Okay, I'm gonna have to be completely opposite <laughs> here. Rachel Lamb Brown, my daughter. <laughs> because to just be truly transparent, rejection is something I've struggled a lot with. Yeah. And so much so, I remember one of my besties in college, she used to say, Rachel, don't think what people aren't thinking. And right. like, I would already just anticipate the yeah. rejection before the rejection would even happen. And so I really had to learn how to you know, not put thoughts in people's head, they, they might not even be thinking. Somebody used to say this saying to me, don't hear what I'm not saying. Exactly. Mm, that, that as well. Yeah, don't hear what I'm not saying. So, Rebecca Lamb Weiss, rejection. This is important topic yes. to talk about. I actually have a verse. Oh, a verse, okay. <laughs> Get it, girl. Can I read it? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, this is just such a fundamental topic and it affects, I think, more of us than we may even realize. But it, this is the solution. I'm gonna save for the guest even comes out. But it okay. says, okay. he, Jesus, predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In other versions it says, we are accepted in the beloved. So no matter how much this world has rejected you before, even the world was created, God intended to adopt us as his own. And that yes. is yes. the answer. All right, and that's where we get our identity. <laughs> And that's yes. where we get our security, Cindy Murdoch. This is gonna be an amazing subject because yeah. I think like some of them already said, there's times I perceived rejection mm -hmm. out of maybe a person's behavior, body language, whatever, and it never really was. So yeah. I've had to struggle sometimes with yeah, that. Yeah, but we're gonna talk about it. Well, he has helped countless uh, individuals and has been a bold voice for the gospel. And today he's here to talk about overcoming rejection. Please welcome our dear friend, Jimmy Evans to the table. Sounds like you're traveling through a storm <laughs> to come across the way yes, to, to bring it. us wisdom. All right, rejection. That I mean, it's a it's a huge word. It's so I mean, especially I think about this generation. How many young kids have experienced rejection in social media and yeah. just the things exactly. that they're, you know, that they're around and that they're exposed to, and it is a big issue. I mean, for every age. Well, love is our greatest need. The absolute number one need of every human being on the planet is love. And because love is our greatest need, rejection is our greatest fear. Mm -hmm. It's also our number one scar. Now, when we did inner healing for people in the church I pastored for many years, and we would talk to them and just say, tell us about your past and whatever. In almost every testimony, they would say, rejection 
is the, great, the greatest wound in my life wow. and it's the greatest control point. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's something that the devil uses Believe to control that. us is the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And so we have to remember going back in history, Jesus was the most rejected man in the history of the world. And so, you know, Jesus can identify with us and help to set us free. But we have to remember, first of all, Isaiah 53, 3 says, he is despised, speaking of Jesus, and rejected by men. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus was rejected by Joseph. Now, mm -hmm. Joseph was not his father, but he was Mary's husband. Mm -hmm. And when Joseph heard that Mary was pregnant, he wanted to put her away. Then when Jesus was born, Herod tried to kill him. King Herod tried to kill him. Then in his hometown of Nazareth, when he went in and ministered, in the synagogue, they took him to the brow of the hill and were gonna throw him off a cliff. Uh, his family rejected him. They, they thought he went nuts when he went into the ministry. Judas rejected him. The Jewish leaders rejected him. The Jewish people rejected him. The same people that cried out Hosanna on Palm Sunday cried crucify him on Friday. And so his father rejected him. God the Father on the cross turned his back on Jesus. And Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus, God forsook Jesus so he wouldn't ever forsake us. Jesus took our punishment on the cross and part of our punishment was rejection. So Jesus, Jesus had this massive rejection, but it didn't change who he was. Jesus was still loving and gracious and kind and whatever. So rejection changes us. And this is the most dangerous thing about rejection is it takes who God made us to be. Mm -hmm. It turns us into yeah. people pleasers. Right. Uh, they did a study of school shooters in 2003. They, they studied 15 school shooters and they found that 13 out of the 15 school shooters felt rejected. And that's where their anger came from. Mm -hmm. It's universal that every single person experiences it, every single person doesn't like it. Uh, and so we need to know how to deal with this so it doesn't change who we are. True. Yeah. As a young boy, you experienced rejection. Yeah, I, I experienced a lot of rejection. First of all, the part of rejection is being unwanted. Now, I was not an unwanted child, I was an unwanted boy. My mother had two older, I have two older brothers, Damon and Lucifer. And <laughs> so, oh no! Yeah. She, I, she had two boys and she wanted a girl. So my, and back then there weren't sonograms. You, did, yeah. you didn't know. Yeah. And no, so no. when I was born, my name was Debbie Dale Evans. And uh, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie Dale, Dale. Dale, Dale Evans was a country western oh, yeah. star. Right, right, right. And so my name was Debbie Dale Evans. And so when I was born. And you uh, had a horse. No, I'm teasing. My, my mother was so disappointed she wouldn't name me. And oh, so, I, so I, when she took me home from the hospital oh. without a name. And so the hospital called my parents after two weeks and said, if you don't name this child, his name is officially Baby Boy Evans. Oh, wow. So then they named me Jimmy Dale Evans. So, and Dale Evans being a, Dale Evans was a, a woman. And so I, you know, like a boy named Sue. <laughs> Got it in there anyway. Yeah. And so, and I was, I was, Dale. I was an extremely large child. And I was taller than my second grade teacher. And so I always, always felt like a freak. And I, my, I, this tooth would have been knocked out. And the doctor put in a silver tooth that I could grow oh, into. No. You know, it was like a really big hunker no, kind of a tooth. Not. And my, he did. And my brothers call me Bucky yeah. the Silver Tooth Beaver. No. So, Can we insert a photo? So, That's so mean. So I, I grew up with the fear of man. You know, I, I grew up yeah. feeling rejected yeah. and feeling like a freak, but also wanting people to like me. And so when I went into the ministry, it was horrible. Because, you know, speaking in front of people, most people are more afraid of speaking in front of people than death. Because it's, it's mass rejection. Yeah. Right. You know, if I'm yeah. talking to Cindy here and she doesn't like me, well, Cindy rejected me, but I'm talking to 500 people yeah. and they don't like me. So rejection is this big thing. So the, the Lord, through a series of events in the ministry, the, the ministry is what tormented me related to my fear of people and the fear of rejection. My number one motivation in ministry for the first 10 years was fear of rejection mm -hmm. and pleasing people. And it was, it was tormenting, it was, it was just, and the church was growing and the church was doing good, but I was a people pleaser, I was a weak leader. Um, I, I would do the right thing, but I would try to make everybody happy mm -hmm. in the process. Yeah. And one day I got really angry at God because a group of people in the church, about 400 people in the church, all decided at the same time they didn't like me. 400? Yeah, there are about 400 of them. Wow. They, they left. The church was about six or 7,000 people at that time. But they all left, and I got very angry at the Lord. And, um, and I just thought, you know, Lord, you're not doing your job. And I'm down here trying to do my job, and you're not really supporting me very well. And the Lord never says, you're right, Jimmy, I'm sorry. And, you know, I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I've really been distracted by the devil the end time. And so I was shaving one morning. 
and I'm sitting in front of the mirror and I'm sitting there shaving. And the, you know how the Lord does. In an instant of time, he took me back in every encounter that I'd had with those people and how weak I had been. And rather than just telling him the truth and just saying, I don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm not, we're not gonna do, they, always, they all wanted something from me that I couldn't do. And I tried to make them happy. And the Lord showed me how weak I was and how placating I was mm -hmm. and how much of the fear of man was in me. And, and, the, and the pain that I felt was this mass rejection by 400 people leaving the church. And they're out in the community talking about me. Everybody's asking me what's happening. And I told the Lord, I said, it, it's my fault and I have been weak. And from this point forward, regardless of what the consequences are, yeah. I'm gonna speak the truth and love to people and they can decide whether they like me or not. And that was the beginning of my freedom. But the bondage of rejection, when, when you, it's like Rachel said, a lot of times what we do when we feel rejected is we preemptively reject other people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're so, we, and we become so sensitive to it. When we first got married, I acted real tough in front of Karen, but I, I was, she would just give me a little look and I felt rejected. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying, just that little, and I, and I, and I, would, turn, I would turn around or I'd be mean to her. Well, the, the root of a lot of that was just, I felt rejected. Yeah, well, one of the most important things about, and about living without the fear of rejection is that God, God loves me. Hebrews 13, five says, he will never leave me. Mm -hmm. He will never forsake me. This is, and this is said twice because of this. Leave means physical, forsake means emotional. Mm -hmm. And so God is the only person guaranteed to never reject me. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have any other guarantee that a person won't reject me except for God. So if I'm basing my love and acceptance and my value as a person on people, I'm gonna live my life insecure because people, Jesus was the most wonderful person in the history of the world and they rejected him constantly. Yeah. And so, you know, you're just, Jesus said, beware when all men speak mm -hmm. well of you. Yeah. And so, cause you're, and rejoice when men reject you. Mm -hmm. Talk about the different people that rejected Jesus, because I think that's something that was so comforting to me. Cause sometimes when you're in that moment and you're feeling so hurt and you're so upset and you're so sad, you just feel like maybe no one can really understand what you're going through. But to know that Jesus experienced yeah. all the emotion and the pain that we, we feel when we, we've been rejected is, is really comforting. Well, think of Judas, you know, Jesus called him. He let him be at his campfire for three years. He loved him, taught him, mentored him, befriended him. When he came, when Judas came to befriend or to betray Jesus, he said, "Friend, what have you come to do?" He called him friend, yeah. and then Judas sells him for thirty pieces of silver. The the devil, the, the, it's devastating. Yeah. yeah, and I think it is comforting, Rachel, to to realize it's really not about us. There are just people that are gonna reject you, period. Right. Yeah. And you can do anything you try to do. You can, yeah. you can please them all you want. If, I said this one time, because I was really hurt over a situation, and I said this one time, the people I've done the most for are the people who have rejected me the so most. So true. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Dorothy, you were talking about at the beginning of the show that it showed me that you're really healed because you faced rejection in a church situation I mean, because you, you talked yeah. to me about it. Yeah. I can, but you decided to forgive and allow the Lord to heal your heart. It took a little bit. Oh, it took some time. But when you it look now, like fast forward a couple of years later mm -hmm. at what has happened to all the people that were involved with that, mm -hmm. and then you can see that God took care of it. And you don't want anything bad to come to people. Right, right. But the fact of the matter is God is just. Yes. And when we, ch we choose to forgive and then we allow God to heal, Yes. and not allow rejection to sit on top of our heart, right. we, can, we can be healthy and whole again. That's right, we? and he constantly shows me every day that, Dorothy, it's okay. <laughs> Remember, I was there from the beginning and I'm still there. Yes. And to see everything unfold, I'm like, it's, it's just constant healing, but I think I protect myself from allowing it to be rejection yes. because I live without expectations. Yeah. If we're friends, mm -hmm. I don't expect anything. Mm -hmm. I just, I will be who I am and show up every day with who God made me to be. Now I still hurt yeah. and we can call it rejection and it definitely was the worst hurt I'd ever experienced. Wow. Yeah. But I have to still be who I am because yeah. that's, that's who God made me to well, be. Well, that's because Jesus lives on the inside yes. of you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and so, um, we wish everyone could have that kind of attitude where I'm not gonna let rejection come in. Yeah. But how do people that are watching that have felt rejected, that have felt uh, discontinued, that have felt left behind, 
how do they come out of it? Yeah, because rejection can quickly turn to bitterness, which well, can quickly turn to unforgiveness. We, we did the exactly. show. We did the show on forgiveness. You, you have to forgive. Let, let me go. Let me go a little different angle here for just a second, because forgiveness is a massive part of this. Because we are going to get rejected. You have to base your who I am in the love of God, but you also have to have godly friends mm -hmm. that have godly standards. For, for example, you know, the world standards are just how do you look, what's your status, how much money do you have, all those things like that. Well, like on social media, who the heck cares about what those people think about me yeah. and how much they like me. And when you're sitting there by your social media seeing how many likes you're gonna get or how many, you know, how many subscriptions you're gonna get or whatever like that, you're just setting yourself up. So I, I'm on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And uh, every now and then I'll read the comments. I don't read them very often, but every now and then I'll read them. It can be dangerous. Oh, it's brutal. <laughs> but I think people are the meanest on they're, social media because they're, so they're like behind a they screen. Are, That's they exactly are. Because right. you want to see the worst of people, just get, on, so get onto nice. an Instagram That's feud right. between people. Well, you know, yeah, well you, you married me and my husband, Doug, and he absolutely will not allow those comments into his brain. Yeah. He's like, I don't want to hear the good, but, and I don't hear that. I say, well, there's these, all these are good. No, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I don't know them, so why am I going to let them speak into my exactly. life? But yeah, that's right. what people do. Why well, give those people power? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tormenting it's when you read those kind of comments like that. It stays with you. Right. It's, yeah. it stays, it and, and it doesn't matter. You can really read 20 good ones, and then this one, and people are mean, is what Rebecca said. They're sitting behind a screen. Yeah. But let me tell you, part one of the definitions of heart it's what you do in secret. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really your heart. And if you get behind a screen and you're mean, then you're mean in your heart. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. And so you, don't tell me you're loving. Here's another way you deal with rejection. Expect it. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get out of this life without rejection. I mean, yeah. don't, don't fish for it. Mm -hmm. Like I'm saying, you know, we need God and godly friends. But Jesus said, woe to you when all men, this is Luke 6, 6 26, woe to you when all men speak well for you, for so they did the fathers, the false prophets. This is Luke 6, 22. Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil mm. for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leave for joy, for indeed your reward is, in, uh, is great in heaven. For in like manner their forefathers did the prophets. I don't think very many people mm. get rejected and go, hey, praise God. <laughs> right. you, know, the, right. the, you know, it's not my first reaction right. you know, yeah. when someone does that. But what Jesus is saying is if everyone likes you, you're probably not a very good Christian. Mm. And I don't want people not to like me, and I want to be a loving person, a good witness. But the truth is, there's just a lot of people out there that hate Jesus and hate Christians. That's right. And so if I'm doing the work of the Lord, I can expect that there's going to be some pretty, pretty mean-spirited people. What I found out in church, Dorothy, by the way, and this is, this is, my, this is my opinion, I think 95% of church people are very sweet. Mm -hmm. I think 3% of them are not so sweet. I think about 2% of them are just evil. Mm. and they're the most hurtful, hateful people in the world. Church hurt is harder because we have a higher expectation exactly right. of them. That's yeah. exactly right. So, yeah. you know, yeah. people out in the world, our expectation is this low. So because. when they do this much for us, they've done this much for us, but our expectation of people in the church is here. So when they've done this much for us, they've failed us by this much. And people get so focused on, like you said, that small percentage of people right. who are right. hurtful. They yeah. neglect the incredible majority of right. believers That's who are right. the sweetest. The yes. sweetest people in And the, world. the best people to be in my life have yeah. always been believers. Yeah. But, you know, the devil wants to put out a narrative yeah. through offended people that the church is terrible and the people are hurting. Right. He sends wolves into the church that's right. yeah. to be hurtful in the that's first right. place. That's right. And so I think that's a good point is that you need to folk, you need to see the full picture yes. and not just focus on the few right. who are hurtful and the ones that are, we just have to forget. Yeah, and have lower expectations yeah. and realizing yeah. that we are all imperfect and right. we're all so broken true. and we're never going to get it. Right, and 100% we can't live of the by time. the like button. Yeah. Like you have a button you called like, yeah. Yeah. and you have a button called unlike, so you're building Dislike. a whole generation on That's whether you exactly. like me, we call it generation like. I'm, I'm okay with the thumbs down sometimes because not everybody is well, Dr. Like. Phil had a girl on his show that she was addicted to like, and, she's, and, he, and he said, why, why are you so addicted? She said, I like to be liked. And he yeah. said, well, will you say or do anything to get liked? She said, oh yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so she would sit at her computer all day long and say things and do things that people would like. And it was really like a drug to her. Oh, yeah. wow. And I think, and, and, and even though we, none of us would do that, I think some people are just addicted to mm -hmm. the approval of others. And that becomes the motivation for your life. Yeah. And the point is when Jesus says, I want you to do this, 
and you know you're gonna get rejected and you don't do it, mm. that means the fear of rejection is actually stronger in your life than the Lordship of Christ. Exactly. Yeah. Can, and, I, so. can I ask a question with that? How does performance-based leadership play into that though? Because I feel like a lot of times in this journey, everything's based on what you bring to the table. Yeah. And we create this culture where you're striving to be liked even in the church. How do you, yeah. how do you deal with that in, in leadership? In I, I think one of the most important things in leadership is relation-based leadership. It's just like with children, is that you, if you don't discipline children relationally, if there's not a relational foundation for discipline, it's all performance mm -hmm. and it wounds that child. Mm -hmm. But if you have a relationship with a child and they know that you love them, then you, you can uh, expect certain things of them. If you have in a church or any setting, you have a leadership that is non-relational. I don't care about you, you're a warm body, get over there and do that. Then what happens is that creates a, a very non-relational performance-based uh, atmosphere where people lose their motivation. Because sure. I'm, I'm just a cog in the machinery. And I think that relation, Jesus was relationship-based. Mm -hmm. And he got up at the Last Supper and he washed their feet and he said, this is not the way the Gentiles are, mm -hmm. but this is the way you're gonna be. Yeah. You're gonna be the servant of all. So I think the spirit of the leadership has to be relational and servant-hearted, mm -hmm. and that creates the right kind. And, and, and do I have expectations of you? Yes, mm -hmm. but it's relationship-based, yeah. and that's different. You know, I really feel like there are, are people watching right now that you have um, suffered great rejection. I mean, there have been things you, I mean, you're sitting there saying you should hear my stories of the rejection that I've had to deal with. And uh, I wanna say, first and foremost, that I empathize with you and, but more than anything else, I wanna say that God loves you and he wants to heal your heart from that. And he wants to give you an, an identity that is based uh, in him. And uh, he can tell you who he has created you to be and that's an overcomer. And he's created you for purpose and he's not through with you. And you've been fed one line, but it's not the truth. So. Jimmy, I just really feel like right now, if we could just um, lead someone in the prayer of salvation, because again, when we talk about rejection, we talk about forgiveness, we talk about any of these subjects, trying to achieve healing in those areas without that God-shaped vacuum being mm -hmm. filled on the inside of us is virtually impossible. And knowing that God accepts us. Yes. You know, it's knowing that we're accepted by God and He, he is not performance-based, He's grace-based. Yeah, I'd be happy to, I want you, you know, I just want you, if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I open my heart to you. I open my heart to you. And I invite you to come in. And I invite you to come in. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Give me the gift of eternal life. Give me the gift of eternal life. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power to change. Give me the power to change. And to live for you. And to live for you. I commit the rest of my life. Life. I commit the rest of my life to you. To you. In you. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, it, it's just that simple to, to pray a prayer out of a sincere heart and allow God to show up in your life in a way that will absolutely blow your mind. And I'm telling you, that's what's happened to you and will happen to you in the days ahead. Um, but for those that say, okay, well, I'm going to give Jesus a shot and I'm gonna give God a shot, but I still feel this hurt and pain, what would you say to them? Psalm 107.20 says that God sent his word to heal them and to deliver them from their destruction. Now, my wife Karen, you know Karen very well, she was the most rejected uh, person I've ever met. Wow. Uh, and she grew up in a very hostile uh, environment, verbally and otherwise. And she had no self-esteem. She was devastated, she was devastated. And she, we've been married 50 years. I've never known a day in our marriage where she didn't wake up and read the Bible. And she didn't believe it when, she, when we were first uh, married. Uh, she believed the bad parts of judgment, but she didn't believe that God loved her. She didn't believe that she could be saved. She, I take absolutely no credit for this whatsoever. She woke up and read the Word every day See, the Word is living and alive. You read other books, the Bible reads you. And she woke up and read the Word. I saw the Word of God transform my wife, uh, changed her from being beaten down, rejected, no self-esteem, to being strong, godly, uh, very good self-esteem by relationship with Jesus. 
And I think what you said, Joni, you can't underestimate knowing Jesus, prayer, the Word of God, those kinds of things. It's the foundation of how you become healed. People can be a part of that process, and good godly people are a part of that process. Mm -hmm. But it has to be in, in God. I look at Karen today, and I don't know a stronger person on earth than her. It comes from every morning she wakes up and spends time with Jesus. Yeah, what about that, Beck? Absolutely. You have to have a relationship with the Lord. And what I love is to actually change your mind. I think it's in the Greek, it actually means to repent. Yeah. And we have to take off our old way of thinking and we have to be renewed and cleansed in our mind through the washing of his word. Yes. That's why getting into scripture, meditating on it. When I think about reading the Bible now, I think of it as my washing. I gotta wash out the gunk of this world yeah. because we're still being inundated by it through social media, through you know TV and other things. We have to wash it out and fill it with his truth. Yeah. And when we meditate on that, we have to even change change the patterns and the thinking because when we get hurt in life, we take on these hurt wounds, yeah. this hurt messaging. I'm not good enough. Yeah. I'm not yeah. that. The painful messages we've received through those painful yeah. experiences and God has to come in, not only heal it, but then he has to change the way we perceive ourselves. And so it's a process and, the and it's through relationship with him. So and you got to crack open the Bible, but you yeah. got to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal yeah. it to you. That's right. That's right. And th the Bible is just like, some of you have one, but you haven't read it. You don't maybe understand it. I would, I would encourage you to get a, a Bible that's written in a more modern vernacular. NLT. What is it? New Living Translation. Yeah, yeah. New Living I think it's favorite. easiest. New Living Translation is good. And we've got New King James Version. Um, message. What, what else? Message. The, the mes message. Yeah, the Message Bible is, is easy to understand. But, Jimmy, it's just so important for people not only to receive Jesus, but to get into the Word of God because it is living and breathing. When you mentioned about the hurt, I thought about your message, The Hurt Pocket. Yeah. People can, can look that up on your website mm -hmm. because we are out of time. <laughs> but I want you to remember, I mean, just remember this. If you don't remember anything else, that God loves you and He created you with purpose. He loves you so much that He gave Jesus to die on the cross for your sin. And all you have to do is receive. It's a free gift. All you say is Jesus. I need you, just like that. So if you're watching today and you're tired of battling with the pain that comes from rejection, then what we're saying at the table is that he can set you free and he will set you free. There's a toll-free number on the screen. We have amazing prayer partners that are standing by. We'd love to pray with you. Also, if you prayed that sinner's prayer with Jimmy, we'd love to send you a book entitled, Now What? But call somebody and tell them, say, you know what, I prayed that prayer. Would you pray with me? There's something about testifying and sharing that you prayed that prayer. Well, I want to thank Jimmy for joining us at the table. For more on his ministry, you can visit him online at exomarriage.com. Can they find some of your messages on there? Yes, they can. So is it called The Hurt Pocket? Hurt Pocket is a series, and that's on exonow.com. Okay, exonow.com. So maybe we can put that up as well. And uh, Jimmy has some great messages that will really help you, teach you. And it'd also be great for you to find a church and to, and, to, and to find a body of people that will encourage you and stand with you. But uh, let us know how today's Table Talk has impacted you by leaving us a comment uh, on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, YouTube. And uh, just remember, we love hearing from you. We want to hear what you're thinking. We also want to hear what God is doing in your life. So thank you for watching. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, ladies at the table. And today, in Jesus' name, be free from rejection. Amen and amen. Bye-bye for today.